All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Harukakadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to your brothers to the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and also laboring in this word in truth, love and sincerity, and may blessings fall upon the houses of the one third. You so called Christians, you just don't get it. You so called fake Christians, might I add, you just don't get it. Okay, the Holy Bible, the scriptures, this word does not belong to any nation but the Israelites. Okay, the Holy Bible does not pertain to anyone or belong to anyone but the Israelites only. Okay, and, you, and the Israelites consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos. Native American and also Seminole Indians, okay? And the rest of you Israelites that scattered through the four corners of the earth, whose seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, no matter what your skin color is, right? No matter what tongue you speak, no matter what land you were born in, if your father goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you in fact are an Israelite and the Holy Bible is your book. Okay, so with me saying all that, you need to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, so going back to the point, as I started out, you so-called fake Christians, you just don't get it. Okay, you believe that this, the Bible belongs to all the nations that are all the nations of the world. You see, but it doesn't. All right. The scriptures belong to who? The world of Israel. You see. Let's get the first scripture is the book of Psalms 147 verse 19. It says, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You see, and the Lord is only dealing with his people and his people is who? The Israelites. Okay. And he show up his word unto who? Jacob. You see, and Jacob's name, which was later changed to Israel, right? Um, Jacob is the progenitor of who? The 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 patriarchs, you see, which brought forth uh, the rest of the children of Israel, okay? The particular brothers and sisters that's come, that comes out, you know, one of, the, one of Jacob's 12 sons, Okay, so I'll read it again. Psalms 147 verse 19. It says, He shall have his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto who? Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You see? Let's get another one. Uh, let's get Amos 3 verse 1. It says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see, so out of all the families of the earth, who did the Lord know? Israel. Who did the Lord deal with? Israel. You see, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see? And as you can see, we are being punished for what? Our iniquities. You see? Let's go to the... In the, in the, uh, in the Hebrews, it says, uh, Avon. It says, per perversity, the previt... The previt... The previti... Slakia. The previti... Iniquity, guilt, or punishment of iniquity, a uh, guilt of iniquity, uh, a condition, right? A consequence of or punishment for iniquity, for sin. You see, and what was our punishment? You see, <clears throat> that if we went off, we will be, we will, we will be cursed. You see. Matter of fact, let's get that. You know, that if we, uh, you know, was disobedient to the heavenly Father's word. What would take place? The curses would fall upon us. And that word is deep pray. Uh, Throwing 28, 28. 
Yeah, because that word is depravity. So when you go to Deuteronomy 28th chapter, and there's other ones we can go to. Um, uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligent, diligently unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, or the Lord thy God, to, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations, above all nations of the earth, right? And you read down to the 14th verse, it talks about 15, 15 verse, or the 14th verse, Salaki, it talks about all the blessings that we would get, right? And when we jump to verse 15, it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy power to observe to, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when you go down from the 15th verse to the 68th verse, right? Or the 16th 16 verse to the 68th verse, all these curses came upon Israel. You see, it's still cleaving on to us to this day. You see? So this is what our punishment. You see? Our punishment for what? Our iniquity. So when you go back to Amos 3 verse 1, it, it, tell, it says just that. Um, verse 2 again, it says, you, have, you only have I known, or you only have I known of all the failings of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see? So we we made a covenant or we made an agreement with the Heavenly Father, right? To be obedient and, and to hearken unto his words. You see, uh, amongst many other things. And what? We broke that covenant. We broke that agreement. You see? So the curse is poured, was poured out upon us. You see? Well, us being led, about, led out of our holy land, right? Our holy land being uh, besieged. You see? Us being scattered through the four corners of the earth. Us being, uh, you know, be, be, being made uh, uh, a, la a laughing stock, a, a, a mocking, and a byword, a proverb amongst all the nations. Us not having power to defend ourselves against them, you know, uh, going, uh, you know, serving, you know, enemies in a land which we knew not, and a, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, being under our oppressor and, and needing to go go to them for the want of all things. You see. You know, many other things I could speak of, but all this, you know, was taking place because what? You know, we had to deal with the judgment of Yah, the Heavenly Father, man, for what? Our disobedience. You see? Why? Because the Lord is dealing with us as a nation. Okay, so let's go to um, Deuteronomy 32. Verse 9, it says... For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. You see? So the Lord's portion is his people. Who is his people? The Israelites. You see? Jacob is the lot of what? His inheritance. Okay, let's go to the book of Joel 2, verse 27. This is just going to be real quick, you know, milk scriptures, you know, basic scriptures right to the point. Joel 2, verse 27, it says... 2 and 27 it says and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and what and who none else and my people shall never be ashamed you see so the heavenly father is the what the God of the Israelites you see and his son has only begotten son right to be to be what a savior for the nation of Israel okay that's what the scripture says. What uh, in Matthew the first chapter, around the verse 20, 21, it says, uh, "And he shall save his people from their sins." See, that's what Yahweh Shai is doing. He's saving his people, the Israelites, because he was the Israelite himself from their sins. You see, not all nations. Okay, let's go to the New Testament because another thing that you you so-called fake Christians do is you try to you know. Uh, you know, disregard the Old Testament, but the Old Testament and the New Testament is aligned with each other. You see? It's the book, book of Luke 1, verse 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. We just show, I just showed you who his people is. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of the servant David. Who is that horn of salvation for us? Yahweh Shai. You see? And, and, and whose house? In the house of a servant David. Because 
You know, Yahweh Shai's direct lineage goes back to what? The house of David. His father, which is Joseph, right? Uh, is from the house of David, which would make Yahweh Shai from the house of David. You know, even though his mother was also, but your father, it's all about your father because what? Your father carries the seed. Your father, your father determines your lineage. Okay, so verse 69 again, it says, and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of the servant David. You see? And Yahweh Shai is from the seed of David. Okay? As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. You see? So, um, yeah, so that's the point that I wanted to touch with that. You see? So, at the end of the day, the Lord is dealing with his people. Okay? The Lord is dealing with his people, the Israelites. All right? I know there's one more, but I can't, I'm trying to think of it right now. Uh, let's see. Verse 70, okay, I'll just continue on a little bit more. It says, verse 71, it says, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to who? Our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath, which what? Which he swear to our father Abraham, you see? So all this goes back to Abraham and who? Abraham's seed, Okay. And we know the seed is kind of for the promise. So when the three fathers of the promise went from who? Abraham to Isaac and Isaac to Jacob. You see? No one else. That we will grant that he that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. You see? So there you go, man. All right. Everything in the New Testament is, is you know, in line with the things of old. You see? Oh, so I made this point. I mean, I made this statement. Let's back it up with the scripture. Uh, book of Matthew 1, verse 21. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, that she is Mary, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see that? So that's what he's going to do, man. Yahweh Shah is going to come back and he's going to save his people from their sins. Okay. And uh, let's see. I wanted to get something real quick. Lord willing, if I can find it. Lock you. Uh, yeah, just bear with me, Akim and uh, Akwaf, Akwaf that's listening. Oh, here we go, Slaki. Here we go. Uh, Luke 2, verse 4 says, And Joseph also went out from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judea and to the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. You see? That's the point that I wanted to get. You see? So, backing it up, when, uh, when you go back to, uh, when you go back to Luke 1 and 68, right? 